So really the big question is, in the wilderness, do you rewarm these patients or what do you do? And I talk to rescue personnel sometimes and they say, yeah, you know, our medical director says we shouldn't rewarm these patients in the field. Well, on an all-day evacuation in really cold environments, you're not going to do the patient any favor to let them continue to cool. So if your medical director says don't rewarm these patients, then don't rewarm them. Just thermally stabilize them. But in order to thermally stabilize patients in the cold, you need to typically add heat. Now, there are a couple ways you can add heat. You can add heat using so-called friendly mammal heat. You can just get in a sleeping bag with these patients, skin-to-skin -skin contact if you have that luxury. Now, there have been some articles written that have shown that when you use skin-to-skin -skin contact, it actually reduces the rewarming rate. But that's because it inhibits shivering. And as we've already said, when patients are shivering, they're not severely hypothermic. And we're talking about severe hypothermia here. So a lot of people get that confused. Another thing you can do is simply use hot water bottles. And I'll show you how to do that in a few minutes. And I'll also show you in a few minutes how you can make a so-called hypothermia wrap or burrito wrap and uh, we'll actually do that on a patient so you can get a better feeling for how that looks. For mild hypothermia, you know, as we said, do everything your mother taught you. Uh, if you can, these patients are often low in sugar and uh, so if you can give them some hot chocolate or a sweetened hot drink, that's a good thing or even a granola bar. I often have people ask me about hot fluids for severe hypothermia and they say, oh well you know I, I had a had a patient that was really cold and you know we we tried to get some some hot chocolate down them and you have to remember that giving any patient that's obtunded and has an absent gag reflex is a dangerous thing pouring hot chocolate down somebody's throat when they have no gag reflex can often result in aspiration or getting that fluid into their lungs so I would avoid that but the real question is, how much heat can you add with a cup of hot chocolate anyway? I mean, imagine we're mostly water. Imagine a bathtub full of cold water, and you pour a teacup full of hot chocolate. And remember that hot chocolate's not boiling. You don't pour boiling water into a patient. You pour water into a patient at 100 or 105 degrees. So a little teacup full of 100 degree water going into a bathtub full of 80 degree water is not going to rewarm the bathtub. Neither will a cup of hot chocolate, but you very well may cause that patient to aspirate. So don't do it. 